Thank you for joining me on our first Tech Talk. Today I want to talk to you guys about our new um, FLR20 radar and how you can save time and money aligning it. We're going to go over two methods on how to do that. Um, I got some tools here and some parts we're going to go over in a minute. But um, yeah, this is going to be pretty informative. Just a quick way on how to run through this. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is our new ACOM 6.5. In ACOM 6.5, we now actually give you the ability to see the alignment value that the radar will actually produce. Uh, this first method I want to describe to you guys deals mostly with applications where you've run your radar for some time. Let's say you get a misalignment value, um, a misalignment error coming up on your uh, display. With this first method, using ACOM 6.5, it's very easy to make the alignment. You'll notice that in the diagnostic, there is a value populated that refers to a table that we have. And in this table, the value will actually hint to you how many turns you have to make on one of the three screws that now the new radar is mounted on. You can see this here. There's only three that we use. So it's very easy to make the adjustment. This bottom screw here in the corner acts as our pivot point, which only leaves us with two adjustment screws. And once you check your misalignment value in the software and you find how many turns you have to make, all you need is really a Torx driver. It's a T20 driver. And you would make the adjustment accordingly to the table. For instance, if the table were to call out a misalignment value of negative 1.4, that would correspond to four clockwise turns. You'd go to the front of the truck. That's where we have this bracket located. And you simply just locate that bottom screw and make four clockwise turns. Now, one thing you want to remember is you want to mark the screwdriver or the bolt itself with a little marker so you can actually count out four clockwise turns. Then in doing so, and again, this is with the table reference in our, in our uh, data sheet, once you've completed this, you plug in ACOM 6.5 again, do a quick diagnostic, and make sure it is properly aligned. At that point, the fault code should go away. You can reset it and simply reread the value. So it's a very quick method, just that one bolt that we use down here, and that is for alignment side to side. It will pivot the whole radar unit side to side with this one bolt. Now, let's say, let's take it one step further. Let's say you get your DTC code, you have a misalignment on your radar. You go into the software. There is no value for you to reference. Well, now we have to take this one step further. This could happen, for instance, if you have to replace the bracket. Let's say it took damage. So in this case, we'll do two extra steps, and we'll need some, some extra tools as well. One thing you'll need is an inclinometer. You can pick this up at any hardware store, really. And the purpose of this is to set up the level of the vehicle. We would place this on the frame rail behind the, uh, the cab of the truck and simply zero it out. Now, it is assumed that you park the truck on level ground. You place this on the frame rail, zero out, so you have a calibrated zero level. Once you've done so, you come back to the front where the radar is mounted right at the bumper. It's usually center line on the truck. There's a cutout in the bumper. And you have an optional metal clip that we provide. Because the new unit, as you might have noticed, it's made out of a composite material, so it's no longer magnetic. On the previous unit, we would simply attach the calibration tool using the magnets. Now we provide you with a little clip. You don't necessarily need to use this clip to attach the, uh, the tool. You could also just freehand place it on there. It's a nice flat surface. You could just hold it on there. But depending on the space you have, you'd place the clip on here. And starting out with, because we're still talking about the lateral alignment, you place your laser tool on the metal bracket now. Again, this being your front bumper, kind of Got to play with your imagination here a bit. I couldn't fit a truck in the booth, unfortunately. You take your now zeroed out inclinometer, and you place it right on the front, so this being the side view here. And you want to get as close to zero degrees as possible. Uh, plus 1.5 is allowable, plus or minus 1.5. In order to make that adjustment, let's say you're off by two degrees, which is now your assumed level of the vehicle. Just take, again, your Torx T20 driver. And this time, we're adjusting that top corner screw, because this screw now adjusts the pitch of the radar, right, up and down. So again, we're only working with two screws now on this new version. You would simply adjust this, small turns, and just watch the degree number on the inclinometer to see how much is changing, get it zeroed out. That's step one. For the next one, again, since the value wasn't established in our diagnostic software, we need to now also make sure the radar is aligned this way. So it's not looking into the guardrail or oncoming traffic and give you false alarms. To do that, flip this around. And again, you can work with the clip or without it. That's fine. 
And this also is the laser level. You might remember this from the, uh, the older version that we have, so you can see the laser right there. Now, the way this works is you would place it again on the bracket on the front. You will need a measuring tape. And you want to look for a solid point on the bumper that's always the same on both sides, about 12 inches or more away from the center line of the radar. So for instance, the tow hooks work pretty well for that. You have cutouts for that in the bumper. You place the measuring tape at that spot. And you can see, hopefully everybody in the audience can see that right now. You can see that little laser reflecting off the measuring tape. All right. Now the key here is, obviously, is this is pitched side to side. You'll see how that changes. So you place the measuring tape at a steady point. And you want to make sure you got the same measurement on both sides. We're going to flip this around and do it on both sides. You want to be within 1 8th of an inch on both sides. All right? So this will have to be done a couple of times back and forth to make absolutely sure that you are aligned. So in this case, you know, a freehand example here, but let's say I'm sitting at 6 inches right here. And as I remove this and flip it around, again, on the front, make sure this is on. Go to the other side. Now, you, again, you want to pick the same spot that you picked on that side of the bumper, same tow hook cutout, for instance. And again, you want to be right at that same mark, 6 inch, or within 1 8th of that. All right? Now, let's say you're not there. Again, real easy. Just take the screw and make the adjustment. So now you're not counting it out based on the table I talked about at the beginning. You're just turning that very slight adjustments to get it aligned this way. All right? And you want to double check this several times. So the key here is after you've done one side each, flip it around again, double check your work. Do it on the other side. Saves you a lot of time um, if you do this maybe two, three times at the beginning. So within one eighth of an inch. Now we're done. And don't forget to clear your DTCs once you're done with all your work in ACOM. And you should be well on your way. The advantage you now have is as you go back into diagnostics after your next drive, you now can see again the reference chart, and you can double check your work. How closely did you actually align it? If anything is still out of alignment, you're not in that sweet spot according to our data table, again, you can just take the screwdriver and follow now how many turns the table is actually telling you that you should turn clockwise or counterclockwise to make the adjustment. This is a very quick method, much easier than the previous generation, um, because again, we're only working with three mounting points now. It's like a three-legged table. And this bottom one, we don't touch at all. It's just our pivot point. So top for up and down, and this one right here for the sideways pitch. That's all there's to it.